Well, great day, everyone, and welcome to Spirit in Mind, where we discuss current affairs with faith and mental health perspectives. I'm Bishop Guy Robinson, and I count it a blessing to be with you again for another week of Spirit in Mind. And I'm grateful for our co-host, Dr. Jonathan Shepard. Good day, Dr. Shepard. Good day, Bishop. How are you doing, sir? All is well. All is well. Grateful to have another week of spirit in mind. Yes, sir. It is good to be alive. And all that has occurred even this week, the week of May uh, 17th, it is still good to be here. And uh, so good to see those who will come in. Please uh, share and let us know that you are out there watching. And we have quite a show for you today. Uh, I am highly anticipating uh, the strength that will come through this show today. Uh, if you're anything like me, I've been asking myself, Lord, how do you help us uh, through these challenging times? And so if you know someone out there who is struggling, uh, even with their peace of mind, struggling with how to balance life, uh, this is the time. Share with them. Call them. I know we don't call people like we used to. Uh, well, text them. That is a matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tag them. You know, and let them know that spirit of mind is on right now and they need to hear what we're going to say today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and there's several ways you could do that. You could do that by VidFlex. Um, you can do that. Uh, there's the VidFlex information. So grateful for our engineer, Minister Kat Henderson. And there's the the uh, spirit in the spirit in mind on VidFlex site. And of course, uh, uh, they can uh, watch either of our YouTube channels. In fact, let's put all that information up. Yeah, there we go. Great. So you could go to any of those means. Uh, uh, look at CGR Ministries on. Um, uh, YouTube or um, Dr. Shepard's information. You can go to any of his media sites and uh, tune in. You can send them. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just come. It's like it's if, if, if it were a physical building, there are many doors. So it, whichever way you come on, come on in the room uh, because we're so grateful for this opportunity to share. Good afternoon to our Spirit of Mind family, uh, Selena Allen, Juanita Henderson, Charlotte Green, Cynthia Hackshaw. So grateful. Uh, Alvin Richardson, so grateful for you being with us today. Uh, as always, so blessed by your presence. We appreciate our Spirit and Mind family. And we're going to kind of look to you for some um, feedback and insight today. Uh, as Dr. Shepard said, we'll be discussing something we think is important uh, in these challenging times. And um, uh, so get people on the phone. If they're going through anything, um, um, dealing with some kind of crises, um, going through some kind of, of, of elongated or stretched out challenging season or process, really we all have uh, for the past uh, 14 months or so. <laughs> and so uh, get them on, uh, let them know we're about to start. So uh, we normally start with an update and uh, Dr. Shepard is uh, are always kind enough to give us anything from the medical community he thinks we need to know. Uh, and so we leave that to his discretion at, uh, to stay there as long as uh, um, uh, his expertise advises. So Dr. Shepard, what do we need to know, if anything? Yes, sir. Uh, just a quick update today. Uh, it is amazing that we have reached our lowest level as far as hospitalization and deaths uh, over the last 14 months. Uh, since, the, since the coronavirus pandemic started. Uh, so we're back um, uh, at lowest levels. Uh, I won't say we're back at the beginning, but we're back at lowest levels, which is a good thing. You might say, how did we get here? We got here through people like yourself being vigilant, being diligent, and getting the vaccine. Uh, so we must continue to become vaccinated. We were just having a quick uh, run through before the show started. and. Uh, Mr. Cat was sharing how people on campuses have to be vaccinated in order to go back into schools. Uh, so we want to make sure parents that you're updated as to what the schools are going to be requiring, whether they're going off to college, whether they're going back to high school, middle school. It's been so interesting when I talk with parents in my office uh, about their viewpoints regarding the vaccine. And, and I understand some of the hesitancy that some, that some have about it. Uh, but we have to understand that in order for this to be managed, subsided, 
uh, treat it, uh, that there's going to have to be some things that we're going to uh, have to uh, take a risk on. We talked a little bit about that uh, last week, uh, Bishop. Uh, and so there's going to be some things that we may not always know. Uh, you know, if you put on the spiritual side, there's some things that we may not always know why God is doing what he's doing, uh, but we must trust him. And he has put in our play uh, people who are educated, uh, who do have your best interests at heart. You may not even know who they are. Isn't that something? God knows what you need and you may not even know who those people are, but he'll make sure that you are getting those uh, vaccines. Uh, I put that in uh, quotes, vaccines, the vaccine for coronavirus, but some of you need a vaccine for depression. Some of you need a vaccine for anxiety. Some of you need a vaccine of whatever that is that's suffering you. Uh, and so uh, I just want to encourage people to continue to do uh, and follow uh, the guidelines that are being put out there. Uh, I Hopefully that we're turning this corner and I know the travel season is coming. This is my last point. When you travel, you want to still be careful. That's not time to say, oh, I'm letting my hair down. I'm taking my mask off or ripping it off, as they say. Uh, I just heard that they're predicting a high travel season, even during Memorial Day weekend, which is going to be next weekend, Bishop. And so people, uh, we want you to be careful, be mindful. You still have to wear the mask uh, on public transportation, airplanes, uh, buses, trains, however you're going to get to where you're going if you're going to be in contact uh, with crowds of people. So those are just some of the things uh, we want to share. Um, if I could pivot just a little bit, uh, we want to send our condolences out uh, to the Church of God in Christ. Uh, we lost a giant uh, this past week. And when I say loss, she transitioned. We know where she's at. Uh, but the evangelist George Rogers uh, died this past week. And such an awesome woman of God who has literally preach in so many pulpits across the world and her ministry was far reaching we mentioned her on spirit and mind because she's had a tremendous impact on my life uh, many of you all know her and have heard her ministry uh, and so we just want to uh, let that family know that we are praying for them saluting them and it really ties into what we're going to talk about today um, i'm not going to steal bishop's intro uh, but it's going to talk about how to endure because so many people are wrestling with death people are wrestling when i say wrestle with death they're wrestling how come they're wrestling with why they're wrestling with i was waiting for the miracle and it didn't happen and the lord has really dropped on both of us that it's time for us to endure uh, so i'll leave it alone at that bishop uh as you see i'm ready to move forward anxious about this because uh, we have a lot of people out there who is challenged. I challenge you once again, if this is something that you know someone out there needs to hear, tag them, post it, text them, call them, do whatever you got to do. Uh, again, um, 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 endurance is what we're talking about. And let somebody know, uh, again, uh, particularly if they are going through um, some things that um, that are challenging and testing. Uh, so, uh, um, again, this is, uh, this is a matter that is certainly relevant to, um, spirit and mind, um, here on spirit and mind. The scriptures are filled with athletic and military metaphors, um, that deal a lot with endurance. Um, just, just off the top of my head and not staying there too long, but, um, the Bible talks about things like running the race that is set before us. Um, pressing towards the mark to obtain the prize, running to obtain, fighting as more than a shadow boxer or not just as one who beats the air is what Paul said, wrestling, not against flesh and blood, uh, putting on the whole armor of God so that we might be able to withstand and having done all to stand, stand therefore, uh, this Bible reminds us that the race is not given to the swift. The writer of Ecclesiastes says, Jesus said that the one who endures to the end shall be saved. The point is that all of these scriptures are just a, a sample group uh, of a recurring biblical theme concerning the power of and the need for endurance. In fact, 
Hebrews 10 says, you have need of endurance <laughs> so mm -hmm. that after you have done the will of God, mm -hmm. you might obtain the prize. So uh, imagine that. Imagine, look at that counseling or the counsel of scripture in this particular case to whom the writer of Hebrews is inspired to write. He says, here's, here's the strategy. He says, you have need of endurance, mm -hmm. not need of exemption which means, and, and uh, persons at the tabernacle, uh, my tabernacle family, where I'm blessed to pastor, uh, knows that I uh, often say, as the Lord inspires us, that God gets glory at least two ways uh, in our lives. One is by giving us a testimony of exemption. There's some things he doesn't even allow us to go through. There's some things that because of his grace, he allows it not to come near our dwelling, as the psalmist said. And so there's some things when we look back and we give God praise because he gave us a witness of exemption. I didn't have to go through that. Thank God. Some of us have made it through 12, 14 months of a pandemic. And by direct experience, you were exempt from that. Thanks be to God. Uh, there's other persons because and that's the way to give glory to God. There are other seasons and other situations in which God says he does not get the glory out of giving us exemption, but out of giving us a testimony of endurance. I had to deal with it. I had this direct experience. I don't just know about this intellectually, but I know about it experientially. Mm -hmm. I battled COVID or it was in my house or I personally know about it. That's not a testimony of exemption, but it is a testimony of endurance. And that's when the Hebrew writer says, you have need, this is what you need, because in this situation, God is not exempting you from it, hmm. but you have need of endurance. And that's really what we wanna talk about. What do we do when God says this situation is not a situation by which you will be ex or from which you will be exempt. But this is a situation in which you will have to go through it. Like the psalmist said, though I walk through the valley. And what do you do when you're walking through the valley? Uh, and the testimony is we have to get through it. That's when we need the testimony of endurance. And that's when the athletic and military metaphors of scripture uh, uh, become particularly important. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the theology of endurance and we'll talk a little bit about the psychology of endurance and um, even the athleticism of endurance because there's a, a, a spirit, mind, body connection here. And we'll talk a little bit about athletic training uh, uh, for endurance and how that transfers into spiritual principles. Uh, so that, that's what we want to talk about today. And Dr. Shepard uh, um, uh, and I were mutually inspired with this. And so Dr. Shepard is going to take a few moments now to uh, take it from here and talk about his sources of inspiration and what led us to get to this point. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Bishop. And uh, thank you for setting that stage. I really like how you mentioned the athleticism or the athletic metaphors, because actually that's where I am right now, um, thinking about the difference between aerobic exercise and anaerobic exercise. Um, aerobic exercise versus anaerobic exercise. It's something that uh, even in medical school, we trained and we learned about the difference between how the body responds from aerobic metabolism and anaerobic metabolism. Um, and what am I referring to with that? Aerobic just really means with oxygen. Anaerobic means without oxygen. And so there is a big difference. And really, when you're talking about endurance, it refers to the aerobic metabolism or the aerobic um, exercises. Because if you're going to do anything with strength or endurance training, that involves uh, aerobic exercise. So let me just show you a little bit about what uh, 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 endurance is as far as endurance training. Um, let me also just say this real quick. I'm going to just backpedal real quick. I want to make sure people know what the definition of, of endure is. And then I'm going to go back to that 
uh, aerobic versus anaerobic exercise. And then I already hear that Bishop and I are lining up as we typically always do. Uh, I should say typically as we always do. So thank God because we are uh, uh, planners and, and preparers. Uh, but the word endure means to remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding. I'll say that again. The word endure means to remain firm under suffering or misfortune without yielding. And it's that phrase right there that really uh, does it for me, as they say, the without yielding part. Um, remain firm without yielding. So when you look at aerobic exercising, uh, it is something that you have to build up. You just can't jump into aerobic exercise and be like, oh my God, I'm gonna get my heart rate up. I'm gonna uh, get those uh, reps in and I'm gonna just do it. No, let me tell you, you will faint. <laughs> you will pass out if you just jump into aerobic exercising and you have not done the proper preparation for it. Um, and I wanna get ahead of myself on that, uh, but uh, let, let me just stick with the endurance training. Um, it's the training of the aerobic system where it includes activities that, inc that increase your breathing and your heart rate. And such activities are like walking, jogging, swimming, biking, and jump roping. And so those are things that are aerobic exercises and it's with air. And what happens is the body produces energy with this use of oxygen. Now you can do something called anaerobic exercise where you can produce energy without oxygen, but there's a big difference with that type of exercise. With aerobic exercise, there is a long lasting effect that goes along with that. Anaerobic exercise, but without oxygen, you have this quick burst of energy and all of it is just gone in a matter of seconds. So, you know, I'm sure we're going to go in and delve a little bit further and, and, and pick up even the spiritual components, because those who know us know that we're going to, you know, match this up with the spiritual component. But when you think about it, if you are enduring something, it's something that will last. It's nothing that is quick, burst of energy, something that's a quickie, as you would say. Um, you are going to uh, build up your cardiac health, your respiratory health. Uh, this is what you're doing with endurance. Uh, the Bible is telling us that if we're going to be able to handle these challenges and be able to maintain our peace of mind, we must be doing those things that will feed I put in quotes, our aerobic exercise or our aerobic spiritual exercise of faith. All right. I'll just term it like that. I'm just kind of creating terms as I go here uh, because we have to make sure that we don't have a faith that when we need to tap into it or that when it's time to utilize it, it just doesn't short circuit after a quick burst of energy. Whew. My God, I don't want that type of faith. And in order to be able to exercise and to grow your faith or to increase your faith or to increase your stamina or to be able to increase how you handle uh, with confidence when you go through, you must go through with endurance. There must be power to endure. And so that's what we want to uh, uh, feed right now. Um, I hear a pivot right here, Bishop. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Um, but yeah, I just want to share with you kind of the analogy of the aerobic versus anaerobic exercise and how it pertains to endurance training. That that's so so helpful uh, um, in terms of of the, uh, I hope that that analogy and and that scientific explanation of what's happening physically does indeed bring spiritual encouragement, and that's exactly why uh, you know as you were sharing with that. Um, uh, that's exactly why uh, theologically God, if you will, has to allow us to go through some things as to develop our endurance. If we were exempt from everything, mm. it would actually be counterproductive to our endurance and our strength. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so and there's some people, um, um, you know, some people even if you use the exercise metaphor, some people I, I got some friends who love the anaerobic exercises. Mm -hmm. they, they like the lifting, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, but they don't like the treadmill and the running mm -hmm. and the aerobic mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but the uh, the aerobic stuff, uh, um, uh, that's the stuff that develops this endurance and longevity. And uh, um, uh, to stay with, Paul talked about boxing is more than a shadow boxer. Well, if you stay with that analogy, uh, that endurance has to be developed in a certain exercises from which the boxer cannot be exempt because not every fight is a one round fight. Mm. <laughs> not, not, not every, not every battle, you know, some people focus just on the strength conditioning, but not the endurance conditioning. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't knock it out, if they don't knock you out in the first two rounds, wow, they won't be able. If, and so the opponent knows if I can just stretch this out, you're going to wear out because you don't have endurance, even though you have strength. And how does that transfer? It would be sometimes what we're going through will take more than one power pack service. Sometimes it will take more than one incredible sermon and one moment of laying on hands of the altar. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it does. You know, sometimes you have those uh, 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 Ali moments when one, you're out in the first round, I took you out. Whatever you're going through, sometimes, boom, you knocked it out. You and God got the victory uh, and you experienced it just like that overnight. Took a couple of days, but then you have some other stuff that's not about the power in the in, in quick fixes but you've been battling this for a little while. And in that case, the race is given to the one who endures to the end. And mm -hmm. so that's why um, endurance has to be developed. And that's why we can't be exempt from everything. I'll close that part with this, but because uh, you that's 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 what came to mind. You were talking because I, I know some people are like I hate the I hate the mm -hmm. endurance development stuff. I like the stuff that shows how strong. I like to talk about how much I can bench press. Mm -hmm. I like to talk about the strength stuff, the anaerobic stuff, which has its place, right? But at the same time, it can be imbalanced if the trainer doesn't take us through the aerobic part because that's what develops our endurance and longevity. And that's exactly why God uh, allows us to go through some stuff. In fact, here's the scripture, count it all joy when you go through diverse temptations. James says, here it is, because the trial of your faith mm. develops patience. If right. you translate it in another language, patience is the King James translation for endurance. Mm -hmm. The trial of your faith develops endurance. So may that encourage somebody to know what you're going through today is simply to develop your endurance. It's not meant to be the end of you. It's not meant to be the thing that takes you out. It's meant to be the thing that strengthens you and builds you up uh, uh, in the faith. So I just think that's so important for us because we live in a culture that likes quick fixes. Yes, sir. Um, and, and certainly not hating on that, but what do we do? when our expectations are not in line with our experience. Mm -hmm. And when there is a gap between expectation and experience, that's where we, ex that's where the pain is. Pain barometer is a barometer. Mm -hmm. uh, in the words of Dr. Chan, between expectation and experience. This is what I expected. And this is what I'm actually experiencing. Whenever an experience is not living up to expectation, pain is the signal that there is a disconnect between experience and expectation. So if I'm expecting exemption and God has willed for to get glory out of endurance, then I have to bring my expectations in line with the witness of endurance that God has chosen for my life. Um, and, and so that balancing all of that is not easy, 
But that's why we're talking about it today on Spirit and Mind. Bishop, this is wonderful. I'm just jotting down some things. I want to I want to take a deeper dive into uh, two things that you just said. Uh, you mentioned about you can have strength, but not endurance. And the knowing that with what has happened, so many people have experienced loss and grief, not necessarily loss of a family member or due to death, but they've lost their job, employment, finances, ability to socialize. They've lost their sense of identity. Uh, this is all doing or even encompasses what we're talking about today. Truthfully, it does. Because when you were talking about how people can have strength, but not endurance, and how many people want strength. You know, the thing that I've been really uh, watching is uh, Evangelist George Rogers was the youth chair lady for our denomination, for the Church of God in Christ. And so many of them were praying for a what they saw, uh, what they call a win. And I remember a post that was saying, God, we're hoping for a win. And I, I just looked at that and my heart broke. It broke for two reasons, because I understand where they're coming from. Lord, we praying for a miracle. And the Bible tells us to hope until the end. But I understood also the other point where if we don't get that win in which we expect it or that W, then there's going to be some pain there. And thank you, Bishop, for saying that, because that's why it hurts so much, because we expect God to do something. And yet the experience may not line up with what our expectations are. And that's why we have to make sure Jesus gave us the prime example. Lord, let your will be done, not my will, but your will be done. And so I understand that. So thank you for helping me to even explain it even better now, because pain is that gap between expectation and experience. Man, I hope you all got that, because what happens is when the enemy himself recognizes, and that's why we have to be careful about where we are when we're going through. So many of us are in a vulnerable state right now. Uh, we uh, have we want these quickies. We want, uh, and, I'm, and, and I'm about to go back to the scripture that we talked about last week. But we want these quick fixes. Uh, we want to do these uh, anaerobic exercises. And the enemy himself knows if I could just get them past round two, I got him or her. Wow. If I could just wear or extend the struggle out long enough, then I know I got him or I got her just where I want him. And we want to help develop our spirit of mind crew, our spirit of mind family, that even when it goes past round two, I am ready for the fight. We want to give you that, in, that power to endure. Let me tell you why um, I mentioned the verse or the, or, the, or the verses that we talked about last week, because in those verses, Bishop, I went back and I revisited him uh, this this past week and even this morning back in Second Timothy, chapter four. And it really spoke to me. And even as it came out, there was three things that uh, three P's actually that came out of how do you endure or keys to endurance? And the three P's that came out was preparation proclamation and patience. Those are three keys to endurance. And we've already talked about two of those keys. We've talked about um, preparation. We must be prepared. Paul was talking to Timothy in this particular chapter of four of, of, of second Timothy chapter four. Paul was talking to his uh, mentee uh, about how we must be prepared to preach in season and out of season. He tells them, look, be prepared. Whether the time is favorable or not favorable. Wow. When you are doing aerobic exercise, and I'm going to keep using that for today, you get mad at that trainer. You don't feel like, I don't want to get out of bed today. I don't feel like doing those. And I can hear God saying that there are some trials, some grief, things that we have to experience. And we might say, it's not that I don't feel like going through that today. God, this ain't the right time for you to put this on me. 
I've been your servant and I want to go through when I'm ready to go through. How dare we? But I understand because that's how we talk to God. But what he has shown me today in even studying the scriptures, that number one, we must be prepared. Paul made sure that Timothy was prepared. And then he told him, as you are going through your enduring season, if you could call it that, or your, your, your strengthening um, uh, uh, or your endurance training, you still must proclaim the good news. You proclaim good news when conditions are still bad. Wow. Isn't that something? Even when it doesn't look favorable, it hurts. You still have to be prepared. You still must proclaim and when I say proclaim, I'm talking about there's power in speaking and communication. Um, you need to be able to declare, I'm not giving up. <laughs> there's power. It's just saying that. I know it hurts. I'm hurting. Um, I know that I expected something and there's pain there, but there it has to be a proclamation. I'm going to win. It may not be a win in which I thought it was going to be or the way in which I wanted it to be, but I'm going to win. And let me tell you what proclamation does. It takes the fear out of the picture. Wow. So you're being prepared and by proclaiming, you're taking the fear out of what you're going through. Yes, it don't look good, but take the fear. Some of us can really take the, 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 the air out of the enemy's trap the air out of even our own enemy, which many times is ourselves. And so that is the step number two, or the second key, I should say, to endurance. And number three is patience. We've talked about that. Paul tells him to patiently correct. That must mean when you're going through, uh, you're providing the endurance training, you want to make sure that you are patient. Um, rebuke encourage the people but there must be some patience as you go through man i tell you bishop you know when you uh provoked me last week to look at that second timothy chapter four i went back at it and I said lord thank you because i hear the keys to endurance absolutely Ab absolutely and and that that's a that's a powerful verse particularly in its context and, and uh um in its context of the scripture and in context of our conversation today. Uh, because as you just said, Paul is preparing Timothy for succession. Um, um, it's really a, a mentor talking to his protege that uh, um, uh, the mantle of leadership is about to be passed on to you. Uh, and and uh, it's argued in, in theological circles that this is Paul somewhat adjusting expectations to, to his experience. Why mm. do you say that? I'm glad you asked. Here's just a little, because in the context, um, uh, it, it's argued uh, uh, with, with some considerable, it's been said and has been said and can be said that Paul, like all of us, had certain expectations. And one of those expectations was the expectation for what we call theologically uh, uh, to personally experience the parousia or the second coming of Christ in his lifetime. Uh, uh, meaning it was Paul's expectation as a believer who could pray what he wanted that the Lord would return in his lifetime. When you get that, well, when that point is argued, look at the, Paul's language concerning the end times to places like the church at Corinth and the church at Thessalonica. He says stuff like, behold, I'll show you a mystery. Look at his language. Uh, we shall not all sleep. <laughs> Those of us who are alive and remain, we shall be caught up. Caught up. And so what you're hearing there in that, in that presentation is an expectation that the Lord will return in my lifetime, that I will be raptured, if you will. Uh, even the disciples asked Jesus before his ascension, will you at that time restore the kingdom? Because there was an anticipation at that the Lord would return in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to 2 Timothy, 
where he's writing his epistles and he's now embracing the fact. You can hear him saying, my time of departure is at hand. Uh, I'm already being poured out like a drink offering. And so now he's adjusting the expectation to his kingdom assignment mm -hmm. to say, now it's time for me to pass the mantle. I'm embracing my mortality and I'm bringing my expectations into line with the experience that God has ordained for me. Mm -hmm. Because even in our prayer life, we can ask for what we want. But in the end, it has to be God, what do you will? Now, that's easier said than done. That's why we see Jesus, which you also reference in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible, that's an intense time of prayer. He says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. I, I, I'm grieving. And he prays and sweat is falling like blood. It takes that, that grieving and that wrestling to bring him to the nevertheless. You don't just arrive at the nevertheless easily, but that because we have a will, but that nevertheless thing is a, is a very therapeutic prayer process where the Lord has to help our will to come in line and even our expectations because, uh, uh, and so the, these are my, we live in a culture of entitlement. So when entitlement creates unrealistic expectations, the experience that is different from our expectations brings pain. And the measure of pain is dependent on the distance between what we expected and what we experience. Mm -hmm. Even, even in the, even in the body, I'm, I don't want to go, but, but if the body is not functioning like it should, mm -hmm. it's pain. That's right. And the more intense the pain, the more of a disconnect there is between the experience and the expectation. Yeah, because expectation and experience. So now for us, in terms of our faith, we have these expectations. Maybe our expectations were built on the American dream. Maybe they were built on things we saw in commercials. Maybe they were built on things we saw in movies. Maybe they were built on an impractical presentation of a um, of a prosperity gospel. Uh, uh, and now here's my experience that is different from my expectation. Mm -hmm. Now I have to begin to deal with the pain of bringing them in line so that now my expectations are submitted to the experience that God has ordained for me. That's not an easy process. And that's what requires the endurance mm -hmm. because now God, I need to endure this process that is different from my expectations. I prayed that my loved one would survive this illness, right. but God has seen fit to get glory another way. Mm -hmm. So now I have to bring my experience. I need endurance because now I need to bring my expectations under subjection to the experience that God has ordained. That, it takes all of that to arrive at the nevertheless. So, so I count not myself to be have apprehended or be an expert on mastering this. I just understand the scriptures and the goal. And even for Jesus, it was not easy. That's why he, again, the blood, the sweat fell down like blood. And if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. What is that but a prayer for exemption? Let it pass from me. Don't let me have to go through this. But nevertheless, because anything that's my idea, that's not God's idea, even if it's my expectation, but it's not God's intention, it's a lesser idea, even if I think it's a better idea. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. That, that's a difficult place to arrive at yeah. and it takes faith to arrive at that place of trust and i'll close with this that kind of faith has to be developed james wow. Waller, the christian psychologist does a lot of good teaching on stages of faith and he argues that just like maturity has to be developed just mm. like the ericksonian stages of development mm -hmm. have to occur so too does our faith have to be developed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so our faith has to go from faith to faith. And the ultimate level of faith is when I trust the will of God, even when it's different from my expectations. Right. And so that's a maturation process that we have to go through. I wanted them to live a few more years, but God saw fit to call them home. Now I have to adjust. And so that process doesn't come easily. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fussing. I'm, I'm, I'm identifying with you. I think all of us have been in that Gethsemane place where it's like, I want a testimony of exemption. Let this cup pass. But God says, no, do you trust me that I can get glory out of this way? And that kind of faith, here's, here's my clue for real, can only be developed by teaching. Mm -hmm. Romans 10 says faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing the word of God. It does, now, I don't want to get mad. Don't, 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 don't get mad at me, but, but I want to take, I'm just doing the scriptures. He didn't say it comes by shouting. You see, it comes by dancing. That all has its place. But he says, faith comes by hearing. Hearing. And hearing, the not the opinions of men, not, not commercialism, but hearing the word of God. The challenge is, back to where you started, Dr. Shepard is saying, but in the end time, as Paul said to Timothy, there will be people who can no longer endure sound doctrine. And when there's the inability to endure sound doctrine, our faith can't be developed. And when our faith can't be developed and our experience doesn't match our expectations, we find ourselves in dark emotional places. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This is good, Bishop. Uh, you know, I'm, as I'm jotting down, I'm thinking about what you just said about, in, in, and I wrote it down as this, endurance requires a maturation of faith. If we're talking about the spiritual part. Yeah. Endurance requires a maturation of faith. And yes, the Bible speaks about how we need to uh, have uh, move from faith to faith, but even talks about uh, for those newborns, uh, once they were, uh, well, newborns were on milk, but then as they maturate, then they're able to take the meat. It's, it's also about maturation. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's amazing that we can uh, stifle our growth and remain on milk and yet never get to the meat part of what the Lord has for us. Um, and I'm just kind of putting it, you know, loosely in that in, in that uh, uh, terminology. Um there is so much I believe that God has in store for us. Man, I feel that thing, Bishop. That it's the scripture. Now, um, yes. Paul says to the church at Corinth, I wanted to feed you meat. Mm. You should be at the place right now where your diet is different. It's 1 Corinthians 3. Paul mm. says, I wanted to give you meat. You, you, mm. really, you really are still on an infant's diet. Wow. If you understand anything about the psychology of infancy is that there's a limited understanding of others and object relations and literally thinking that the world is all about me. <laughs> and wow. so, so, so Paul says, I really want to give you by this time, because he's not talking to sinners, not sure, but he's talking to the church at Corinth. Uh, 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 um, that you should now be able to eat meat. I gave you, and you're still choking off of the milk is yeah. actually what he said. Wow. Wow. And that's where so many of us have found ourselves uh, because this pandemic has allowed for us to go back and re-examine where we are physically, uh, mentally, emotionally. Uh, you know, I'm just going to go back to the sip and see spiritually, intellectually, physically, socially, economically and emotionally. Uh, this pandemic has really challenged us. And in doing this inventory, and, and I didn't know we were going to go here today, but it makes sense that when you're looking at endurance, you want to make sure that you're looking at your diet. Uh, it all plays a part. You know, what is it that you're eating? What is it that you're taking in? 
you know, Bishop, you're absolutely right. Uh, in verse three, when you look at uh, Second Timothy chapter four, uh, it talks about there will be a time when people will no longer listen uh, to sound and wholesome teaching. Uh, can you imagine that? Yes, you can't imagine that because it's happening now. People will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Uh, they will follow their own desires and look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Oh, my Lord. You know, can you imagine being in a classroom? Can you imagine me being a physician? Let me just keep it personal. And I'm just looking for someone to tell me, well, you have to cut this way or, or you don't have to do all that. It, it don't take all that shepherd in order to be able to be <laughs> in order to become the physician. You all would hang me. And <laughs> I don't know what y'all would do to me, but I can't even imagine me going to the teacher saying, well, I don't want to do that because I don't feel like doing it. It's too much work. Lord Jesus, that means that you're that means that you're not ready for the different diet. That means that you're not ready for the different level. That means that you're not, hallelujah, you're not ready for the higher level that God has for you. Man, thank you, Bishop, because this is helping me because some of us are in a place of transition. Let me just speak to that because I know that's where I'm at right now. Some of us are in periods of transition. And as you're in this period of transition, you're wondering, how am I being sustained during this time? You're wondering how you're being kept. It's because you have been enduring. You've gone through the endurance training. Some of you have gone through what it takes to maintain. You're wondering, yes, Dr. Shepard, I am wondering where my peace of mind is, but you have not lost your mind. And part of that is because you have endured. You have taken on what you need to take on so that when those life challenges come, you will not spit out the sound doctrine that helps to keep you in line. Um, there's going to be a time where people can no longer be coached and or pastored. Oh, my God. Bishop. Absolutely. That's, my Lord. That's what absolutely. they're saying. Um, they would rather engage in anaerobic exercises versus aerobic exercises. Both of them produce the energy but one is short term and the other is long term. Uh, wow. 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 Yeah. I, I, I hear people uh, saying that and I'm looking at just all these comments. You know, this is this is just something where we as saints of God, I encourage you, yes, to look inside yourselves. But this is also a message that we must be able to spread ab abroad too. this is not something to keep for yourself because we have to make sure that we're building up each other in our most holy faith, as the scripture says, so that we can endure. Someone needs to know what it took, what it took for you to be able to maintain even when you were grieving. Absolutely. And here's the thing, and Bishop, and I, I, and I want you to address this because, and I, and, and I can hear us concluding on this. In verse five, Paul tells Timothy, this is what you must do. He tells us to keep a clear mind in every situation. Wow. And that's what the purpose of this show really is about. How do we maintain a clear mind, spirit in mind, in every situation that we go through? This is what part of our mission is. Lord, help us to keep a clear mind. We cannot be afraid of the suffering for you, Lord. Uh, we must work at telling the other, the others the good news and fully carrying out the mission that you have given unto us. That's what verse five is saying. Um, you cannot fully carry out the ministry that you have unless you have endurance. You can't do it through anaerobic exercises or these quick bursts of energy. You are faint. You'll drop out. You'll give up. So now I'm just standing, Bishop, why so many people drop out? Because they have taken the road of the anaerobic exercise or the anaerobic lane, and I'll say that, versus the aerobic lane. And we must, in this time, we must be clear-minded. And so, Bishop, I, you know, help us. You know, how do we how do we maintain that clear mind in this situation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have identified something. If I um I'll make me a so bold to even say that um uh, uh we're witnessing that we're witnessing we've witnessed over the past fourteen months the trial of our faith an endurance test, a revelation of our maturational state. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, e even uh, uh, this, this whole trial 
has revealed some things. It's revealed some people who are more individualist centered. Mm. The challenges with people who refuse to wear masks because it violates my personal civil liberties versus public safety. At what point are you willing to take bigger pictures into and other people into consideration and be temporarily inconvenienced? One of the reasons and one of the debates is, did this take too long to acknowledge? Did it have to take this long? Why is it taking so long? There's no consistency between states of how to deal with it. So it, it's revealing. It would have been much simpler if it were a physical enemy because we pride ourselves in the nation on our military might. Mm -hmm. We got so many weapons in our arsenal and we have all these fleets of ships. But this battle was not against those kind of enemies. And so it wasn't about might. It was about endurance. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's some if it were against an, any other nation in this country world, then perhaps maybe a couple of days or a month or you know, marched into Iraq and it was over in the matter of notwithstanding the casualties, but it was a relatively short moment when it is physical because we pride ourselves on being a mighty military power. But this battle with COVID was not about that kind of might. It was about being able to unite, mm. to endure, mm -hmm. to get over our feelings and, and go by the facts that are before us. And in those areas, we were profoundly challenged. Wow. So, so they, they were, they were, it was challenging our sense of this was supposed to happen quickly. Why couldn't we do this sooner? And these kind of different battles are, are, are what we're what we're dealing with. And um, in the middle, you can keep saying that stuff for people with itchy ears. We're the mightiest nation. There is. We don't need to wear masks. That stuff don't work. We're already fine. You all that itches scratches the itchy ear, but it's not sound doctrine. And the sound doctrine was, it's going to take this, this, that, and some sacrifices and some joint efforts and some thinking about others besides ourselves. And whenever we get to those kind of discussions, we're talking about maturation. Mm -hmm. And maturation is a different kind of battle. And so that endurance thing is, is a real challenge for our society because we like quick fixes. I mean, and, and it is what it is. And I include us that there are advantages perceived, real and perceived to quick fixes, but there are also advantages to process and developing endurance. So um, I would I would say uh, one other thing to develop endurance um, is uh, um, is that doctrine is having is having that maturation. The maturation gives us a stable um a uh, uh, um, resource so that we can even monitor our self-talk. Mm -hmm. When you're in an endurance process, what we say to ourselves, and I was looking at some stuff on athletic training, and what we say to ourselves while we're going through the situation is very important. So when we're in a, a process that is taking time and requires endurance, uh, whether it is in a courtroom, whether it is in a rehabilitation process, or whether uh, it is in um, a, a, a grief process or dealing with other disappointments and setbacks in life. What we say to ourselves, it is very important that we check what uh, uh, psychologist Albert Ellis called it our ABC self-talk. Um, mm -hmm. ABCs meaning adversity, beliefs, and consequences. Mm. Um, the form of adversity has come upon me. And now it's testing what I believe. Mm. What I believe is what I say to myself. It's what I ruminate over within myself. And so while the athlete is training, I was looking at some data uh, on sports trainers, and they deal a lot with the state of mind and how it affects bodily performance. 
And so what we say to ourselves while we're running that marathon, the trainer said, can affect how long we can endure. Uh, uh, in fact, so some some trainers train their marathon runners to think of certain things while they're running rather than how much their knees are aching or how much this is. So because what you think on and what you tell yourself. So you have to be trained to say, come on, you can do this. Come on, push. Come on. You gaining ground. Come on. You're almost there. You, you Come on, keep moving. Because what you say to yourself can influence how we behave. Here's the biblical moment for it. The woman with the issue of blood is an interesting uh, 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 um, story for many reasons, but it's coming to mind because there was distance between her and Jesus. And when she touched the hem of his garment, which brought experience and expectation together, she got her healing. Mm -hmm. But in between, while she was dealing with the press, is what the King James says, was she had to, the Bible says the press was great, which meant the pressure, the obstacles to her reaching her goal were great. Mm. If she focused on the pressure and kept ruminating to herself how many people are here and how difficult this is and how much money I've spent on physicians and how much my situation has grown worse, it would have distracted her from reaching her goal and she would have possibly given up before enduring unto her healing. Mm. But the key phrase of that verse is that it says, while she was reaching, she said within herself, there's the self-talk, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, mm. I shall be whole. Look at her self-talk while she's enduring the press. Mm. What you say to yourself while you're under pressure can affect your endurance. I'll say that mm. again. What you say to yourself while you're under pressure can affect your endurance. I'll say it a third time. What you say to yourself under pressure can influence your endurance. If you keep telling yourself the press is great, the press is great, all of these obstacles, spent all my money. If that's what you ruminate over, it will affect your endurance. But if you say to yourself, if I could just touch his garment, if I could just touch it, I don't even have to touch him. <laughs> if I can touch something that's close to him. <laughs> if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just reach something that's touching him, mm. then I shall be made whole. <laughs> wow. And that's what Jesus actually said to her. He said, You pull who I felt the virtue leave me. Something pulled out of me. And in the end, he said, Your faith. Yes. Has made you whole. Made you whole. Your self-talk. I'm trying to tell you, stop stop talking yourself into dark and dismal places. Yes. Stop yes. ruminating over the negative and embrace what Paul said to the church in Philippi. Think on these things, mm -hmm. which means don't think on those things, but think on these things, because what you say to your adversity, beliefs, consequences. Adversity is going to come. What you believe and say to yourself will influence the consequences. And so those, those things are just important. Watch the self-talk in the process of endurance. Absolutely. Wow, Bishop. You know, it just takes me back to what I was saying about the keys to endurance. Uh, you helped me to uh, give more meat to that word proclamation or to proclaim. Because when I was talking about it, it was talking about communication. And so I was looking at how you must talk and you must communicate to yourself. And so you just helped me uh, with that uh, regarding the self-talk. That makes so much sense. We need to be making sure that we're saying things to ourselves that will help us when we are enduring the trial. And also you answered the question too, uh, how do you have a clear mind? As Paul told Timothy, you must think on those things which are of good report. He said those things. These are things that we must continue to do as we're going through, as we're building up that endurance. How is it that you're going to be doing the aerobic exercise? All you can do is thinking about baking a cake and eating cookies and all this other stuff. What? That, <laughs> you're, you have to be in a mindset of what to do. 
in order for you to be able to carry out that exercise. Let me say this, and I am ending here because I know we're at, uh, so many people have talked about how come the Lord didn't prep us for what, we're, for what we were going through or what we're about to go through or what we have gone through through the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I've heard so many people talk about that, but Bishop, as you were just talking, it really was just pressed upon me that, Lord, are you really testing our endurance during this time? That just, like, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Lord, are you, are you with all that has happened unexpectedly, are you really testing us to see, do we have what it takes? We have gone through all the teaching that we, many of us have gone through, but now we've had to apply that teaching. So many of us have been taught and taught well. I know if you go to Tabernacle, you've been taught well. The, I, you know, And the churches that I have attended, I've been taught well. But is it time now to apply the teaching that God has given to us? Could it be that he's testing your endurance? Um, I want to leave that question with you all today. Is it possible that during this time of the pandemic, God is saying, I want to see my believers step up to the plate. I want to see what they're really made out of. Um, and that doesn't always sound good, don't feel good. It puts, uh, puts a, shut, uh, a hush over the room, so to speak. Could it be that God is testing our endurance? Something for us to chew on and think about. I'm going to stop there, Bishop. This has been powerful. This has been so helpful. I pray that all of you all out there will share this episode today uh, because it will help those. And I, I have a feeling we're going to revisit this again uh, very, very, very soon, <laughs> maybe next week. Uh, but this has been most impactful today. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shepard. Thank you, Spirit and Mind family. Again, I think I think uh, uh, we pray that you will share this with someone. And um, I, I think this is I think this is a test and I think endurance is um, being developed. And so we will almost certainly visit this again. Um, um, uh, there's so many other things flooding through my mind as the spirit is moving even in this uh uh, podcast in this moment. So listen, tell somebody about today. Uh, if you know anybody that's going through that, may God help us to have healthy uh, senses of expectation. That means may he minister to uh, uh, our cultural feelings of entitlement. May he give us healthy and holy expectations so that our experiences develop our endurance and make us even the better. Um, join us next time for, uh, as the Lord gives us grace, uh, tell somebody about today and then tell them that they can join us next week by the grace of God uh, for Spirit in Mind. Thank you for being with us and see you next time on Spirit in Mind.